Hello, and welcome to The Huntington Way. My name is Pearl Sunshine, And I'm Lenny DiCastro. And in today's episode, we'll be talking about music education and the benefits of people learning music from a young age. Before we dive in in talking about the benefits of playing musical instruments, let's talk about music in general. Right, because even li just listening to music has many advantages. Uh, one advantage of, advantage of listening to music is that it helps you maintain focus while studying. Yes, and I remember when, when uh, Dylan was doing the online les uh, session, I saw him like, why do you have your music on? And then he told me that it, makes him, it, it helps him concentrate with what he's studying. So that's another benefit for that. Absolutely. And I know a lot of students use that as a resource in order to help concentrate on what they're working on. Um, some other benefits of listening to music are that it connects people. I think listening to music is a great way to build community, especially if you feel like you, uh, I don't know if you know the same song as someone else, if you feel similar emotions when you're listening to something. And also if you listen to a similar genre as someone else, then that makes a connection. And then music also helps with memorization. Yeah, and then that's the reason why we sing nursery rhymes and even sing the alphabets to the children from, from at an early age. Information is significantly easier to remember when there is a tune or rhythm behind it. And while there are lots of benefits of listening to music, there are even more benefits by playing an instrument. And there are so many different types of instruments to choose from. There's brass, which includes trumpet and trombone, for example, woodwind instruments, so flute, clarinet, saxophone. There are string instruments, so guitar, violin, and ukulele, uh, percussion instruments like drums and cymbals, and even your voice can be used as an instrument. You have mentioned all of this uh, musical instruments. Have you played an instrument while growing up, Pearl? Yeah, so when I was younger, I played piano as a child for through elementary school and then through middle school a little bit but I was never very good at practicing, and so I never got good at it. I also didn't love it. But then I learned how to play the French horn when I was in middle school and played that through uh, high school. I also played the mellophone and marching band. And so something that I love about music is that sense of community that you build with other people, because especially when I was in marching band in high school, and I'm sure a lot of students can relate to this, you really form a community, you make friends with the people around you, even within your section of other people who are playing the same musical instrument as you. Uh, so it was a really great experience. And Lenny, what about you? Did you ever play an instrument growing up? No, it's just kind of like, I like the sound of the guitar and also the ukulele. And then that's basically, that's the one that I am fascinated about. And also in my place in, uh, in the Philippines, we also have this marching band. And sometimes they go around and then go to the different places to go, especially if we have like a fist day, fist day. And they play different kinds of instruments, and that's the reason why I'm familiar with, but mostly I like guitar and ukulele. There are many reasons why parents sign their kids up for music programs. Similar reasons to why kids join sports teams, because of course, if they uh, join sports teams, they can learn about teamwork and discipline as well, focus, and also fun. It helps kids learn to think creative creatively help kids learn to express feelings and emotions as well. And music can also improve language and reasoning skills. And there's no coincidence that much of these reasons include skills related to language and social and emotional intelligence. Multiple studies have shown that music training enhances reading skills, auditory discrimination, fine motor skills, vocabulary, and nonverbal reasoning. A study from the journal Nature Neuroscience has also shown that playing a musical instrument enhances the brainstem's sensitivity to speech sounds, allowing musicians to have an increased language learning ability. And then that makes sense why music would translate well to learning a language, because music itself is another language. Exactly. Reading music is similar to reading English and many other languages in that there are formal set symbols that read from left to right, and even when listening to these languages, it involves paying attention to pitch and rhythm. It kind of reminds me of listening to someone who's speaking in a more monotone voice, because we tend to not want to listen to someone who's speaking monotonously, um, because there's no pitch and rhythm to what they're saying. And so adding these elements of music really helps with our speech on a regular basis. That's right. Some other skills that are acquired when playing an instrument besides language learning includes improved memory. So if you want to improve your memory, music is another option. Um, it's, just like what I said a, a while ago, it can help with study habits as well. 
you can also learn the uh, how to solve a problem and especially when you are especially when you are men especially when um when we're talking about teamwork yeah, and for those who may not be as familiar with the musical world, teamwork is just as much a factor in music as it is in sports. Even though each musician is playing their own instrument, all of the sounds coming out of each instrument need to work together in order to sound good. An improved study habits may be a surprising benefit to some people, but in order for someone to become good at playing their instrument, of course, they need to practice. Right. And as I mentioned earlier, when I was growing up, I was not good at practicing. But taking time out of your day to practice the musical instrument translates really well into taking time out of the day to sit down and do homework or study for a test. Music education from an early age also helps with brain development. According to an article in the Journal of Neuroscience, Musical training from a young age changes the anatomy and functions of the brain, and those changes are maintained into adulthood. This means that adults still reap the benefits of learning an instrument in their youth. Another article from the journal Scientific American cites from multiple studies that consistent and conscientious music practice from an early age can help children process sounds better, making it easier to maintain focus when absorbing other subjects in school. In other words, students can apply the skill of focusing on certain sounds to, focus, uh, to focusing on and learning a variety of information in school. Clearly, music education is beneficial for students. There is no arguing that. Something to keep in mind is that not all children want to learn how to play a musical instrument. So what then? I think the best course of action there is to make a decision based on what you know about your child. Maybe your student is more interested in sports or theater instead of music, and that's okay. You know your child the best. Now that we've discussed the many benefits of learning music from a young age, parents may be wondering how their child can get involved. Well, there are many options out there. You can sign your child up for band, orchestra, or choir if their school offers those programs. Many musicians offer private lessons too, and there are some other school and summer programs for kids interested in music. In a little bit, we'll learn more about a program in Colorado Springs that gives students the opportunity to practice their craft outside of school. But first, our weekly tip for students, and this week's tip is, explore ways that work best for you when working independently. Most people need short, frequent breaks throughout their day and work time in order to stay productive and motivated, while some other people thrive on working consistently on a task until it is finished and then taking a break. Think to yourself, what works best for me? Do I need short, frequent breaks, or can I work for a long time on one task? Figuring out which system works best for you will help you with time management, motivation, productivity, and help with overall organizational skills. When we come back, I'll be interviewing Jenna Hinkle, the Assistant Director of Development for Alpenglow Music Program, a nonprofit that allows students of all ages to get involved in music outside of school. So stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm here with Jenna Hinkle, the Assistant Director of Development for Alpenglow. So welcome, Jenna. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about Alpenglow and your role in the program. So Alpenglow is an organization of small music ensembles called chamber music ensembles. And there's typically about two to nine people in a chamber music group. And we have semesters, so they typically follow like an academic schedule. So we have a spring semester and a fall semester. And then this year, we're also putting on a summer, summer program as well. And each semester is about 15 weeks long. And that means 15 rehearsals every week. So each rehearsal is about an hour long and it's coached by a professional active musician from the Pikes Peak region. So most of them are in orchestras or teaching lessons or part of a group themselves. Um, and so our, our participants kind of get that experience from someone who has a music career. Um, and then I do a variety of things for Alpenglow. I mostly do sh social media and marketing and then anything else that needs to be done. So yes. Great. And so what would you say the goal of the program is? The goal is to provide music to everybody, regardless of their skill level or their age or, or their background. Music is incredibly valuable and it gives people an opportunity to collaborate with others and increase their own skills and knowledge. And so Alpenglow 
we at Alpen Glow, we want to make sure that as long as you can read music, you have an opportunity to be involved and work with other musicians, which I personally think is the most fun part of music is playing with others. Definitely. And it sounds like so the first step if someone wanted to get involved would be to learn how to read music from yes. either their school or a private teacher and then come join Alpen Glow. Yes. Okay. Yes. Nice. And how did you get involved? So um, one of the coaches, her name is Martha Muleisen. She also teaches at UCCS, which is where I graduated from college. And she has taught quite a few of the classes that I've taken and has coached quite a few of the ensembles that I've been in. And so after one of the rehearsals one day, she was just asking me what my career goals were. And so she was, she said, oh yeah, um, my friend JJ has this program called Alpen Glow and they're hiring somebody. So should I get you in contact? And so that's how we met. Yeah, that's okay. how I got involved. Great. And you said that Alpen Glow works with a variety of age groups. Is that right? Yes. Yes. We work with all kinds of, of people. So most of the people we work with are high school age, um, kind of college age. But we also have a lot of older people who kind of, they, they've come back into music as well. And so they, they're just looking for a place to play again with others. And I'm sure that's helpful too, because it does do the older participants also play with the younger participants yes. is it okay so yeah. multi-generational yes. so the ability for high school students to speak with older people and i don't know gain insight about life or whatever else exactly. there might be exactly yeah yeah it's really neat and what has your personal journey in music education looked like so i grew up in a very musical family um it was ingrained in me from a young age we were listening to classical music all the time and so i just kind of had a love for it and in elementary school we had the option to pick an instrument and so i picked the violin because everyone else picked that instrument <laughs> so i picked the violin and i was in orchestra for a couple of years and then when i went into middle school i decided to change instruments so i picked up the cello which is now my main instrument and I just loved it. It really spoke to me. And so I sought out a private teacher. And that was kind of my first experience with music education um, from like a one on one standpoint. And so she taught me the basics. She taught me technique, how to read bass clef, how to translate the notes to my instrument. Um, and I just loved it. And then I joined an orchestra in middle school. And eventually I got into high school and I joined the orchestra there. And I just loved it. I think having a really good teacher is super important to loving music and really growing as a musician. And so I joined the chamber orchestra there, which is reserved for kind of the more advanced musicians in the orchestra. And I kind of realized I needed better technique. I needed somebody who could teach me at a higher level. So I got a different teacher then. And he kind of taught me more advanced technique, but also musicality, like how the music feels, how it should sound to the audience, um, and how it should connect with you emotionally, specifically. So, yes, I loved it. And then I decided to go to college, and I was looking at schools, and I applied at UCCS, and it's a totally different experience in college. In high school, everything is pretty tonal. Um, it's, it's very, like, the traditional classical music that you hear. And then in UCCS, I was exposed to so much, so many different things, um, way more atonal things, things that were a little bit strange. For example, my senior recital, I attached like electrodes to plants and I improvised over the sounds that the electrical signals were translating into my laptop. So there's just so many cool things that you can learn depending on where you go for school, where you get your education. That is very cool. Yeah. yeah, because the main thing I know about, I don't know, learning a musical instrument in school is that more classical sound. Yes. <laughs> so that's really neat that you're able to experience, experiment more yes. when yes. you're in college. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, so you've had plenty of music education experience. Yes. So why should students get involved in music from a young age? It's just so valuable all, all together. It's multifaceted. You kind of touched on it in the beginning in your first segment. It teaches you patience. It teaches you to be patient with yourself. It teaches you discipline. Um, you need to practice to get better at your instrument. 
Um, and it teaches you social skills as well. I love playing in groups and most of the musicians I know do as well. And you just, you need to learn to be a part of a team. You need to learn your strengths and how others, others strengths fit in with yours. Um, and then music, it, it just, it teaches you so many skills. It's like learning a language when you learn the notes on the page, you learn different clefs, you learn how those notes translate to your instrument, whether it's a physical instrument or your voice. Um, I just think it's so important. Yeah. And this might be a more difficult question, but <laughs> what is, what do you think the main skill is that you took from learning how to play the violin and cello that also applies to other areas in life? Because oh, um, you mentioned, and the reason I ask is because you mentioned all these skills that you glean from learning an instrument like patience, um, you know, learning to work with other people. So what would you say connect, like what skill connects with you the most? Um, focus for sure. I, you, you also mentioned it kind of translates to homework and, and studying for exams. You have to kind of, it, it's kind of a repetitive process to learn an instrument when you're learning a new passage or a new technique, then play it over and over and over again until you learn it. And it takes time. It takes focus. Yeah, definitely. And are there any benefits to playing a certain type of instrument? So, cause earlier in, in the show, I mentioned brass, woodwind instrument, string, vocal. Do you think there are any benefits of playing one over the other? Um, I don't know if there's any benefits specifically for any kind of instrument. It takes different skills for every instrument and you have to decide which ones with the most. I have, I only play the cello and kind of the violin a little bit. I'm not one of those people who plays a bunch of different instruments, but I do know some minimally and there are different challenges to each instrument. For example, if you play a wind instrument, you need to have really good breath support and to connect your instrument with your body in that way. Um, and then as a string player, you know, you have to have good finger strength and coordination and, you know, I'm, I'm moving my left hand in a completely different way than my right hand. So it just, it requires different coordination and different skills for every instrument, including for vocalists. You have to learn your body, learn what works for you and translate that to your performance. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. and that all makes sense. Yeah. And once I tried playing the clarinet, <laughs> not successfully, <laughs> but it was hard Yes, because I played brass instruments growing up and even just playing a woodwind instrument, it was really difficult to even just make a sound. So I can understand what you were saying about, yeah, needing that, uh, I don't know, some strength in your lungs and um, yeah, to be able to do that. So what if a child is in high school and wants to get involved in music, but hasn't learned to play an instrument? What is your advice to them? My advice is that it's never ever too late to learn an instrument. It's kind of like learning a language. It's easier when you're younger, but it's never too late. Um, experiment, don't just pick one instrument from the get go and decide that you can't learn anything else. Um, I think the best thing you can do if you're financially able is to look for a teacher who can help you. Somebody who knows the instrument that you want to play really well and somebody who can kind of look at how you're playing and correct you and just expand your skills. Um, however, in the age of the internet, there are so many ways that you can learn an instrument on your own. YouTube videos galore. I have learned so many things from YouTube videos. I know a lot of other people who have as well. And um, I know that Fender does a deal. So if you're looking into learning guitar, ukulele, or the bass guitar, um, they do free lessons for you. So there are a bunch of different ways that you can go to learn an instrument. And again, it's never too late, never too late. Yeah, so maybe I can relearn to play. Yes. <laughs> for the French horn. <laughs> yes. And can you explain what some advantages and disadvantages are of turning music into a career versus a hobby? Because I know, especially after high school, that runs through a lot of musicians' minds is, okay, do I, yeah, do I go into the field of music in some way or do I turn to a different career? Um, I think there are more advantages than disadvantages. Um, obviously, being able to make money doing something that you love is really valuable and really important. 
you don't want to hate your life because you're doing a job that you don't enjoy. Um, and it takes a lot of practice and a lot of skill and in, you can feel so accomplished at the end when you are successful in your career. On the other hand, it does take a lot of work. Um, it takes a lot of practice and having been to college for music performance, you spend so much of your time practicing and in rehearsals and talking to your professors. And there are a lot of people who audition for orchestras and they can reject you at a lot of them and you just have to kind of persevere and push through if it's something that you, that you really want to do. Um, a lot of the professional musicians that I know, they typically don't just have like one job that they do either. You don't just sign to an orchestra and that's it. You have to do other things to supplement your income as well. And so just being completely honest. Yes. <laughs> um, you, have to do a lot of things. So I have a professor who is in an orchestra and she also teaches private lessons and she teaches at the university and she does freelance jobs as well. And that's how she makes a living. And if you love it, then it's totally worth it. Great. Well, we are about out of time, but really fast. I know that you have some summer programming happening. So when does that start? Where can people sign up? Perfect. So our summer program is from June 25th to June 30th. From June 25th to June 29th, there are nightly rehearsals and you will be signed up for one of two time slots. So 6 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. And then there are two concert times on June 30th, um, which will be the culmination of the work that you do at 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. And it will be coached by our regular coaches, our professional active performers. And uh, we have a few extras. So we have a June 24th masterclass with a clarinetist. We have a yoga workshop with coach Martha Muleisen and then a faculty concert on July 1st. Okay, hey, great. Well, thank you so much, Jenna, for joining us today. This has been The Huntington Way. My name is Pearl Sunshine, and we'll catch you next time.